when I was in Paris, a rainy day, we'd just finished the Pompidou Center and it had the world's worst press. I mean, I'm dead serious, it had the world's worst press. Um, and I had learned by now then not to shout that I was, I'm Renzo with the architects. Uh, and uh, was, I came, this small woman I remember, uh, came up to me and said, would you like to come under my umbrella? It was pouring with rain. And I said, thank you. And I said, and I was under, and she said, what do you think of this building? And I said, stupidly, I designed it. And she hit me on the head with the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Rogers, Lord Rogers of Riverside, is one of the world's most celebrated architects. His practice is responsible for such iconic buildings as Lloyd's of London and the Pompidou Centre in Paris. We are at the Royal Academy in London, Burlington Gardens, at an exhibition celebrating Richard Rogers' 80th birthday. Richard, do you know whether Prince Charles is going to come and see this exhibition? I doubt whether he'll be interested in coming to see this. The Prince of Wales had a, a, entered, I think, the architectural scene uh, by attacking what I think he thought was a carbuncle on a, friend, a face of a friend. It's never been clear whether it actually was us, ours, but I think we can pretty well say I'm perfectly happy that he should say it. Uh, and, of course, it sways the public. Uh, what the public often say when something like that is, ah, oh, he's speaking for us. And I try to say, well, he's not exactly a, a man of the people, and he isn't willing to debate. Now, I may disagree with Thatcher, uh, but then I, I can, we can do it in Parliament or in the, uh, in the, paper, in, in the, in the papers or where it may. And B, there'll be another election, and then there'll be another person. So there's hope. Here there is no hope. I always say that all good architecture is modern in its time. Um, I often point out that in Florence, where I come from, um, when they were building uh, one of the big palaces, um, there was an exchange of letters from the neighbours, who were obviously in single-storey buildings as they were, and this palace, which was four storeys, probably equivalent to eight. And again, they were saying, you know, why do we need these big buildings? I think there is a shock of the new. It's a shock of the new with its food, with the shock of the new with its architecture or art, and then we get more used to it. And maybe that's time to start thinking about what you're doing. Shouldn't you challenge what you're doing, possibly? But it's not usually a mistake. Wren, who uh, Prince Charles loves greatly, uh, spent 40 years building uh, St Paul's. And uh, in the end, he got so fed up by being attacked and having to change his design he put, that he put a, a fence all the way around uh, St Paul's so that he could get it above the 18 feet, which he thought by that time nobody could stop it going up. And by then, he was 70. So even, and we think of him as a quiet, traditional man. He was a modernist in his time. For me, this exhibition has been, of course, immensely difficult. Uh, it's been a year of very hard work in the last five months doing this and trying to work in the office has been extremely complicated. But in some ways, I've enjoyed it more because I haven't had to think about architecture. I've had to think much more about the implications of architecture on people and people implications of people on architecture and also the influences that I, all the people that have influenced me, which in the end is how we do architecture. We are all influenced uh, by the people around us and I've been able to express those. Um, and those, those influences remain with me.